Well, I guess I'd ask people to think of the thing that you love the most, or the person that you love the most. That is how you should treat the water. That's how you should treat the land, is with love. The, the river gives us our way of life. You know, each of our bands, the upper, the middle, and the lower bands of Spokane people are named in relationship uh, to the salmon and to the river. So the reintroduction to salmon is so important for that reason. Today's effort is one of those things that really puts that message out there to people about how important this is. This partnership begins with the land and the waters and the original people who called this their home. So the fisheries truck just pulled in. It has 51 amazing healthy salmon in it that are about to go into the watershed. First time in 111 years that salmon have been here. It's just such an amazing welcome back moment and speaks so strongly to the, the hope for the future that we have. You know, salmon for us, it's kind of a spiritual experience. Those salmon have a spirit. And, you know, they're just like us. Those fish have been in the truck for a few hours now, and we would like to get them out safely and efficiently. To make that happen, we are going to net the fish out of the truck and place them into a rubber inner tube. I'd like to invite individuals from the Spokane tribe, our supporters, and the general public to help form that human chain and pass the fish down to those waters. To know that this is happening in my lifetime, I just, I'm overwhelmed. I'm just overwhelmed. I hope that it just touches your hearts and you guys take in this beautiful experience. So the Little Spokane River is tremendously important from the historical perspective of not just the tribe, but also of fish. It was one of the major salmon producing streams in the Columbia Basin. And to bring these fish back here, uh, to demonstrate that they can survive and thrive is tremendous. Over the next two months, we'll be following these fish using radio tags to figure out what habitats they're using uh, during what stages of their life. So we hope to find the places where they like to spawn um, and the places where their carcasses will decompose and contribute to the ecosystem. So much credit to Tribal Fisheries for working so hard on this and doing this amazing thing for our community. The Conservancy is able to be involved because of our recent purchase of the Waikiki Springs Nature Preserve, which is on the other side of the river, and um, we protected that piece of private property to keep it open to the public in perpetuity. You know, we had generous support through the state legislature that made that happen, and great support in the community. And then, of course, Washington Fish and Wildlife, which also manages land along this corridor. Um, just all of those partners coming together to make a moment like this happen is amazing. Uh, things like this today, as well as our fisheries program uh, and other tribal members become an educated natural resources, it's, it's all about connection and it's all about healing. Uh, when we lost salmon, as the, one of our tribal leaders said earlier, it, we, we kind of lost a part of ourselves. It's almost like when you lose, lose a loved one and you're, you're hurt and it, you know, certain things can, can heal you. And this is, this is one of the things that's, things that's gonna help heal the tribe. I've been here for 10 years now and working on this since I started. You just have to start small. That's what we've done. And here, 10 years later, we're actually putting fish back in the river. And uh, we just hope to keep growing that. Well, this, this is like my second time being with salmon. It definitely feels like, like you know who you are. You know what I mean? Like, I think my ancestors would be so proud of like what we're doing nowadays. 
For these little kids, a seven pound fish is a monster. And some of these were, you know, 15 and 16 pounds a piece. And seeing their, seeing their reactions and hearing their giggles and their laughs and their excitement when the fish start splashing in the water, that's just the most amazing thing to me. Obviously to us, this exceeded all of our expectations. Spokane's forgotten that it used to be a major salmon stream. And so over the next coming years into the future, we hope to bring those fish back year after year until they're able to reach here on their own volition and contribute to the ecosystem, to the river, to the landscape, and to the people. Everything seems to need an advocate. We have to speak for the river and we have to take care of her. It gives me hope for the future for my son and it's amazing that he can be here and that he can see it and that we can experience this together. We have all these beautiful tributaries. We have scientists that are working hard for restoration. We have young people that are becoming biologists. We need our young people and use our traditional tribal knowledge to support that scientific knowledge and really uh, fight for clean water and fight for the salmon. Arms are kind of get up to demonstrate to you. <laughs> Spokane did in happy dance. For me, the joy in this is seeing the excitement on everybody else's face and how involved they get and the and feeling those emotions, obviously, um, that are here. We're the last ones here today. I've been here since nine o'clock this morning and I can still feel it in the air. And that is what's more important to me than anything else. Yeah! Okay, I need a happy dance. Love them, thank you.